Stand, please. Would you turn with me today to First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, uh, rather, First Thessalonians 5 and 17, I'm sorry, 5, 17, First Thessalonians. When you find it, say amen. amen. Now let's read it with some energy. What does it say? Remain standing. Lord, speak to our hearts. That we might be able to speak to others. In Christ's name. Amen. 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 Church, I want to share with you today. Remain standing with you today. Something that is, for me, is very disturbing. Take your time, God. Very disturbing. We have all of this conversation, every way I do, about God. Right. He's able, he can do this, and he's done that. All of that's wonderful. I like to hear people talk about how God, Jesus, got in the fire furnace with the Hebrew boys. But what about my fire furnace? Right. I want him to get in mind. One of the most powerful things God has given us that we neglect. Right. And that is not friends do what is called tweet. You don't tweet it, it's already there. Uh. Space book or on your book will not answer your midnight hour pain. Yes, right. But I'm a living witness. I would die saying it. If we could get you to learn to pray, pray. Many divorces will not come about next year. If we could get, if I could just get you to pray. Pray. You won't tell me how bad homes are, because you got to be straightening out your own path. If I could just get every member of this church to pray, he or she will not talk about other folks' shortcomings. The reason you don't talk about yours, you don't want nobody to know them, so you talk about other people. Amen. Prayer has been given to us by God, and if we didn't get it, Jesus demonstrated it. All right. Jesus prayed in the hour of disappointment. When all other problems would come against him, he didn't throw up his hand and get a drink. He prayed. So there is power in praying. And you smart, academically, young people, talking about old-fashioned, old school. The reason that our ancestors did so much with so less because they depended on praying to God. They depended on it. They didn't have all the stuff we have, and yet in many instances, material thing, they had more than we had because they prayed. Amen. Amen. Pray, 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 pray. If you want to survive Christmas, don't worry about your ham. Worry about your prayer. Because if God gives you a ham and you're not right, it might choke you. But oh, if you pray, it'll go down smooth and easy. I know what I'm talking about. Because I have witnessed it over and over again. I keep telling you, the doctor said to my parents, he might make it to 19. They're dead. I'm still here talking about pray. Yes. Amen. A few years ago, the doctor said, if you make it for the next two years, you'll be lucky. He's dead. And I'm here telling you about pray. Yes. 
Now I want you to listen to something. I want tonight, today I'm going to talk about prayer. Quincy is going to come and do something that some of you say is old-fashioned, but you don't know it. If you did, you'll sing it more. She's going to sing for us today. If it had not been for God, where would we be today? He kept my enemies away so I could see a bright, shiny day. Listen to it. If it had not been. If it had not been for the Lord wow. on my side, tell, tell me. me.
as we move through this text and subject today, the man that wrote these words, the Apostle Paul, he knew if it had not been for his prayer life, he would not have survived. Otherwise, he wouldn't have talked so much about it. After he got saved, he didn't get nosy. He went to some friends, uh, like what we call a place that he could move from the crowd that he might petition God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. He was there this mountain for three years to learn about God. Amen. Yes, sir. Happy to have Brother Bryant with us this morning. Yes, Let me come back again. Quit waiting until you get in trouble. Pray while you are doing well. So that when you get in trouble, you can just lean on it. It is a fact that God wants some praise before we want something. That's a fact. And if you're willing to give it to him, I'm telling you, he'll bless you. Prayer, when I, when I think about it, really think about it, prayer is the thing that, let me try to put it another way. I think it would be better. Another way is that you can mix eggs and flour together to cook a pound cake. It'll be a pound all right, but without the butter, it won't be no cake. Amen. A lot of people, I know a number of people, I went to school with some of them, they have an excellent knowledge of the word of God. But they don't know nothing about God. You see, it's okay to be a theological expert. But who's going to help the expert? I'd rather be able to read one line and know Jesus than be able to read 50 lines. You see, he can take that one line and bring me where I ought to be without reading any of the others. You haven't witnessed some stuff that I have. But I'm telling you, God is not what you think. He's what he said he is. Yeah. And he said, I am God. Yes, I am. And besides me, there's none other. No, no. I said that the, the news media wanted to interview me about Trump. I don't need no interview about him. I know him. And never met him. I know enough about him to know that I don't need to be worried about him. Amen. Amen. I told you last Sunday, and let me tell you again. Say it, I'm not worried about what Trump is going to do. I'm worried about where am I in the middle of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Let, 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 let me back up. If Jesus could go to sleep in the middle of a ship sinking, let me tell you. Certainly, I ought to be able to go to my bed and go to sleep. Yeah. He's my God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I like this story, this woman, uh, the surreal story. In Chicago, she had been to church, and she got home by 11 o'clock, and uh, someone was in the house. A lot of her stuff was piled up near the door, and she went in the house singing and praising God, and he said she was crazy. But when she got through praise and he ran out and left her stuff. You see the, see, the power of God, if he called and got in that crazy woman, but ran that crazy man out of the house. Yeah. Don't underestimate no, no, God. No, no, sir. Amen. Amen. Friends, I believe in, and a lot of you don't, but I believe in, my friends, I believe, I believe in it with all my heart, that we have what it is known as a system that with not only is it with us, 
But I believe in a belief system. If I don't believe in something, I ask myself about it. I always check on me first. If I have a belief system, uh-huh. then I ought to keep something in my system. Say it. Say it. So when I need it, I can pull it up. Pull it up. Let me put it another way. We ought to have a reservoir system. Reservoir. And you ought to keep it full. Like we warned about the river was going to be full with water. God knows what he's doing. But the church got to get on board. Yeah. Don't come to church and believe you've been praying all the week. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing won't happen if you look around and see what other folks are doing. Just keep your focus on praying. That's why I said to people, and this is all of you, if you're in the reading your Bible from your phone, that's wonderful. But when you get to reading, don't text no message. That's what the young folks tell me that you all do. Don't text no messages and don't receive any. What are you going to do with them? Well, my boyfriend might call you. If he had anything, thoughts about you, he wouldn't call you during wish about. If I had a girlfriend to call me during wish, I don't want her no more. She don't have no respect for God or me. Amen. Read your text before you come to church and get your texting over. When you're going to be in church, text to God. Tell him, Lord, you brought me through this week. I stumbled and fell, but you've forgiven me. Now here I am here to give you some praise, some glory and honor. That's what you do on Sunday morning. Yes, sir. Amen. Let's move on here. So look, friends, look set. Very careful. In the, if, I, if our belief system is working, our faith will move. Listen careful. It moves our determination. It gives us all kinds of possibilities for God. It strengthens our courage. The lady was on the plane. I'm sure you heard about it. She was on the plane and uh, she got to singing. And she got excited. All right. And when she got louder, the students came and said, why are you acting like that? And she told her, sit down about near my side. I want to tell you something. And she raised it again. And when she got to singing, the student forgot her duties. <laughs> you missed it. God can slap you down, knock you down, or straighten you out. Whatever you want to do. But if you believe in him, yeah. you have to act upon it. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Church, listen to her for you. Uh-huh. My friends, the belief systems is one of the most powerful things we have if we understand it. I've been having problems with my phone and working with the telephone company for almost six weeks. It gets better and then it gets worse. We bought a new one and it's still having problems. It's not the new phone, it's the system. I told a man who worked for one whole day on the street, on the lines. He said, check, we're checking the lines on the street. When he came back at 6 o'clock that evening, he said, he said we, we haven't found too much. I said, that's normal. You're a human being. You can't find the problem, just replace it. Yeah. You missed it. And he said, well, I think we're going to do something different. He came back the next day, was there four hours, and still didn't do the thing to correct the phone problems. I'm not an expert on telephone. But I know one thing, if I keep paying the bill, they will become one. (laughs) Amen. Like he said, don't get excited, uh, Brother Powell. He said, we're going to take care of you. It's still having problems. All the time, I don't want them there day and night. All Friday evening and all day Saturday, get through and go. The reason I'm telling you that is that when I pray to God, I expect for God to do something, and he's always doing it. Maybe I don't understand it, but he's doing it. He reveals to us. Many of us don't believe that. Many things you think you're smart. No, you're not. God has revealed them to you yes, sir. if yes, you're sir. a child of God. 
And so you can understand issues that you never would have thought you would understand. But let him reveal it to you. And you can't do that without prayer and reading the word. Listen careful, friends. Listen with the Old Testament. I hear you saying, one of the powerful scriptures you're going to read anywhere. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. International Version. This one is if. Now, see, we got a lot of ifs in the Baptist church. If they depend on God, he'll get them through. If they will confess to God, he'll straighten us out. If they, if they yield to God, he would bless us because we're going to bless somebody else. If we, if we handle our money right, God will add to it. If we pray long enough, the Spirit would work through us. Yeah. If we believe in prayer, then God will show us what prayer will do. It's if. If my people who are called by my name. We are called by the name of God. We're called Christians. or used to call it the way. Since we are called by Jesus' name, then we must show some evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, friends. Listen careful. Called by my name. And this is what is hard for to get this modern generation to do. Well, humble themselves and pray. pray. They don't want to, you don't find many people want to be humble. They want to be stiff-necked and look at me. Well, you're going to soon get down or you're going to be already down. You don't need to show your pride, look at me. If it hadn't been for God, there wouldn't be no me. Listen careful. Humble themselves and conjunction, pray. And seek my faith. And turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Yeah. But you got to get rid of the if. If. Yeah. If. A few weeks ago it was thunder and lightning here. It was bad at midnight. It was so bad it was, I, thought, I thought the house was going to fall off the block. I mean, she shook the house. I didn't get up and try to stop the thunder of the lightning. No, no. I turned over in my bed and talked to Jesus and went to sleep. Yes, sir. I can't control what's going from the atmosphere. But I can control how I feel and think about it. Thoughts, your thought pattern can mess up your belief system. Yeah. People don't believe this. Many times, you, people would never go in the street and sin. I know a lot of people would never go to a bar. They would never drink. They would never be caught doing bad things. But they think bad. And your bad thinking would block your prayers being answered. Read your Bible. Your thinking ought to be pure. Out of the heart flows what? Issues of life. And what about a pure, clean heart? I might disagree with President, but I'm not going to hate him. He's not, he's not big enough for me to hate him. And I don't mean his height, I mean as an individual. Nobody would get between Ephraim and God. You can't do that. Okay, let's move on. Humble themselves and pray. Then, God's not going to do anything until you do something. I know people don't believe that. You must show your faith to God yes, sir. for him to react on your request. Amen. Friends, the definition of prayer is a solemn request for help to express expressions of thanks, addressing to God an object of worship, All right. a religious service, especially at a regular one of which people gather. Talk to the man. Yes, sir. He's not the man upstairs. He's the man in your heart. Amen. Yeah. Pastor Williams, uh, I'm praying that Sandy Claus would bring me something. Keep on praying, you're wasting your time. First of all, there is no Sandy Claus. 
If you, 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 you've been taught that stuff, there's no Santa Claus. And if a Santa Claus would have came down our chimney, and daddy would have shot him. I know it's a good laugh to teach kids about Santa Claus. I didn't teach my kids. I taught my kids, I'm going to get you this. I'm going to get you now. What is it that you want? Then they give me a long list, and then I, we, we decide what to buy off of that list. Yes, I hear you said, uh, Pastor, you're old-fashioned. Well, when Christmas was over, I didn't owe nobody. Say it. Woo! When Santa Claus gets you coming down the chimney, who's going to pay the chimney bills? All of that has to do with our Bible, prayer, and study life. We've got to learn how to think so we can know how to think. I think so I can thank you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now to another side of it, and then I'll, we, we'll keep moving on. Did you not know that when you hate somebody, that you are the one suffering? Yeah. Yeah. Not the other person. That's it. Your hate can't stop. Your hate in this section can't stop this section. It'll stop you. Hate has been proven by the doctors. It comes toxic. And it interferes with your health and your thinking. Yes, it does. Amen. Amen. I'll give you a laugh for the day. Uh, some of you would never agree with this, and that is just your problem. Uh, when I was in 11th grade, I was invited to the prom. All right. <laughs> and uh, the, the young lady said, uh, that you interest me, I would like, she was in the 12. I would like to invite you to, to the prom, junior prom. So I heard her, I said, well, what do I need to wear? She said, you need to wear a top. I said, what color you want me to wear? She said, I want you to wear a mixed black. That's what she said. I said, that's fine. I said, what time you want me to pick you up? She told me, I said, now tell me what time you will be ready. I said, because we're going to have a limousine. And I, we pay for the time we use. She says, I'll be ready when you tell me. Because you are my guest. I, done only ha I didn't have no tuck that was mixed. Well, so I told my mother what I had to do and what I needed. I had five weeks to do it. So mama said, you go to the tailor and have them to make you one. You know why she said that? Francis, I had been a good son. You missed it. She, I, she hadn't had to punish me. I didn't get no, hadn't, wasn't getting no whooping. I was a good son. And let me tell you something. You, you can laugh at that if you want to. But a good son will receive good blessings. Good blessings. Good. And when I stepped, when I stepped in that hall and my coat was a little long, and I put my hand in the left pocket. Go, Evan! And all I can think about is being a good son. Look what I have. Folks are running around there. Yes, well, sir. we're going to eat when we get through, but we, we, we can't go. We have to go to this place and that place because we don't have the money. We went to a, what is called the top of the line because I had saved my money. I prayed when I was young, day and night. Prayer would teach you how to do things. I had, I had money that my parents gave me, money my auntie gave me, and I had some money I'd say. I could go anywhere I wanted to do and do what I wanted to do as long as I was home by one. You can be a good Christian, and God will reward you. Prayer. 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 Okay? Now, friends, when you think about it, Paul lists things. He listed about how we should pray. He says, pray always. He says, 
1 Thessalonians 5, 16, he says, in your prayer, rejoice always. Yes. He says, 1 Thessalonians 17, pray continuously. Uh -huh. Now, I don't mean you have to get on your knees all day long. I don't mean that. You can pray as you walk. Some of y'all, if you would have prayed on Black Friday, you wouldn't be worn today. But some of the stuff you try to get, you can't wear it anyway. Because you got too much to put in it. But when you pray, your function of your mind opens up. So Paul says, I didn't say it. Listen to what Paul says. But test them all. Hold on to what is good. That's first Thessalonians 5 21. Paul gives us an outline of life, how we should handle it, and we need to work it. Amen. Work it. Work it. I said, work it. Friends, if you don't work it, it won't work. Now to come back again to the junior prom, folks laughed at me and said, You're not going. I said, No. And he said, you, have, you don't have nobody? I said, I'm not looking for nobody. And all of a sudden, someone came to me. And I tell you, she was a stone fox. <laughs> Amen. Do what's right. And it'll show up every time. Amen. Amen. Friends, friends, listen carefully. Listen very carefully. Prayer, if you deal with it the way it is, scripturally, it will change you. I mean you. The you I'm talking, it will change you. What you used to be, if you pray enough and read the scripture, you will change because the spirit is in you and he'll help you to change. Amen. The white preacher said to me, uh, I have an invitation to go to a church. And he said to me, now, when you come to our church, don't you preach like we preach. He said, I'm having a problem with getting people to say amen. And your people have no problem with it. I said, son. <laughs> Some people would never say amen if Jesus come down that aisle. <laughs> That's, they don't want to be looking. People be watching me and I'm saying amen. Brenda, I don't care who watch you. When it's time to praise the Lord, you better get up there and praise him. He brought you too far than to worry about what somebody else said. We need to learn it. But if you, you don't have to know it, but learn it. Amen. Amen. I have a birthday, the 15th of December. You think God done brought me this far and I'm going to act silly now? Say it, say it. No. I don't need to, let me, let me demonstrate. I don't need to drink no liquor. I can drink some water. Liquor didn't bring me this far. I know Christmas is coming and people are like that. Well, I'm going to get one drink a year. That might be your last drink. All right, let's move on. First Thessalonians 5, 23. Now... May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and may, you, you, may your spirit and soul and body be, my friends, preserved, complete, without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What is it that you got in your mind today that you need to get it out. We're going to help you before you go home. Friends, Psalms 32 and 8, will she said, God will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. You can't get away from God. Somebody said, well, you know, I'm going to go to San Francisco where nobody knows me. What about the God in you? He knows you. And listen, friend, Luke 18, 1 through 7. Let's read the first verse. Now he was, he was telling them a parable to show that at all times 
They ought to pray and not to be loose hearted. Right. Friends, it's a continuous thing. Yeah. Forever and ever. Uh, this, some of you know about this. Uh, I was sermon uh, two weeks ago. Someone wants to rent our church from 11, our fellowship hall from 11 until 2. And one of the specials they want to use is cook barbecue. And I said, only reason I'm telling you this, only reason. I said, you cannot cook barbecue here, and I'm in the building the next door to you preaching, because the Baptist people would want to eat the barbecue. I see all the crap. <laughs> Say amen, choir. Yes. Say, mm, that smells good. I can't wait till we get through so we can get some barbecue. You won't get no barbecue here because they're not going to cook no barbecue here. Now you see, these are not, these are not church people. They want to use us to satisfy their needs. Not so. In fact, I don't even believe in people selling dinners. Pay your tithes and watch God work. All right, let's move on. Lady is dead in this church. She's dead, and furthermore, when we stopped selling dinners, I was only here one week, a couple of months. Nothing wrong with selling dinners if that's what you have to do to starve. But when are you going to quit? Quit. You got to stop sometime and pay your tithes. First of all, I don't want to deliver no dinners. And I told a church in Chicago and in Sacramento, my wife is not going to no bar, no barbershop, and deliver a dinner because you go there, then the guy's going to say, well, if I'm buying from you, what else can I get? Give him a check and keep her at home. I hear you. John 14, 6, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to minister of the word. That's what the apostles say. But they wanted to read the word and pray to God. Oh my God, I wish I could get all of you in here to make a commitment today and say, from now on, I'm going to pray more than I've been praying. Uh -huh. And let God work through you. Friends, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, we provide the way of escape. Also so that you will be able to endure. Let me give you an illustration about that. I was in Jackson, in Clinton, Mississippi this year. And, and uh, I came out the door waiting on, on the agreements coming down. So I was in the lobby. And, uh, but wasn't nobody in the lobby but myself. And so I was just kind of moving around. Uh, I wasn't bothering nobody. Wasn't nobody in there. And all of a sudden... Uh, a lady showed up, and uh, she said, you, uh, how are you? And I told her, she said, you're not from here. And I said, why you said that? She said, because you don't act like it. She says, uh, how long have you been here? I said, we're here for a family reunion. This is the reason I'm talking about praying. So she says, uh, are you married? I said, no. She said, uh, your wife expired? I said, yes. And she said, how long? And I told her. So she said, oh, you could have been married a long time ago if you'd have wanted to. I said, that's true. So I didn't ask her no question. So she said, uh, did you have breakfast yet? I said, yes, I've had breakfast. She said, because I was going to, I'm finna sit down and have breakfast, I was going to invite you to join me. Now listen to this. <laughs> listen to this. Yeah, I'm trying to be a gentleman. <laughs> and she's going to pay for my breakfast and don't know me. I prayed before I went to Clinton. Lord, watch over me and keep me. Now, I'm going to go down there and have breakfast. Then she wanted me to go for a ride. Then a ride. Then go somewhere else. 
No, he paid for my own breakfast, and I don't have to get in your car. Amen. You don't pray to be protected, and then you act up. Any man within the brain would have been glad to have breakfast with that lady. But you have to turn down some things in order to get the right thing. That's the book. That's the book. And you only can do that with a prayer life. You've got to have a prayer life. And not because I, I'm, I'm, I'm a widow, but you, uh, you, you can be a married man today. And they'll ride you around the block. <laughs> Ladies, wake up and straighten up. It's not that bad. Right, right, right. Ask God to give you a good man. Right. A good one. Right. If he's not working, don't have no money, don't have no car, don't have nowhere to live, leave him alone. Yeah. If you're broke, you, how you gonna marry a broke man, woman, women? And you'll do it because you're not praying. Right. Right. I don't want but one thing that's broke. <laughs> Just one. And that's a piece of cornbread. <laughs> I want to break off a piece. <laughs> In Colossians 4 and 2, it says, Devote yourself to prayer, keeping a light in an it will, my friends, an attitude of thanksgiving. Devote it. You'll be able to thank God when you're not thinking about it. John 1, 9, right. if we confess our sins, he's able, faithful, and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's God. Prayer is one of the most important activities in our lives because we actually talking to the sovereign God of the universe who has all power and all knowledge. You're not just praying to somebody. You're praying to the almighty God, the God who controls the universe, the God who can touch you and heal you without you doing nothing. The God, when you pray, this God is the one that saved you. Yeah. If he can save you, he got the power to keep you. Yeah. And if you want to be kept, you have to want to be kept for him to keep you. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is keeping power. Yeah. He, the people say, well, I'm filled. No, you're not filled. If you fear with, come here, help me, Holy Ghost. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then some stuff you leave alone. I, I just said it won't bother you, but leave it alone. Uh -huh. If you feel. When you feel, you can say, person, no, thank you. When you feel. When you feel, you think, they're like they gave me too much money the other day. They gave me something like $90 too much. I'm filled. So I said to the lady, you made an error. She said, no, I didn't. I said, ma'am, listen. She's young. I said, ma'am, listen. I said you made an error. You gave me too much money. I'm being honest so you don't cry this evening. <laughs> when you fear, you won't take something that don't belong to you. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know somebody behind me said, you, you, you're an honest man. I said, no. No, I'm not honest. I said, I'm saved. Saved. You can be saved and not honest. I'm saved. If I didn't keep the 35,000, I'm certainly not going to keep no 90. If I was the envelope, 35,000, so the address and everything, I could, it was cash and money. I could have put it in my coat and kept walking. But I got to live with Ephraim. Yes, and I don't want to wake up at night with a guilty conscience. Yes, Hallelujah to the king. I said, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, yeah. we all would have been in prison or dead. Yeah. He kept my enemy away. Yeah. He walked by my side every day. Uh -huh. And I got to thank him thank for who he really is. Yeah. 
Friend, I wish I had time to finish this sermon on prayer. I'll do it later. And so if you haven't been praying, you haven't been thinking about it, I challenge you to start today. Start praying to God for all of your needs. Whatever they might be, pray to God and watch him work. He will work, never will be late. But you got to pray to him, not what someone tells you, but what you know for yourself. Yes. Some years ago, I was in Mississippi on my knees, 14 years old, right. and I couldn't walk because I got scarlet. My leg was scarlet from the knee all the way to my toe. Oh, and I couldn't touch, nothing could touch it. And they built a scaffold like and put a sheet over it and a quilt so I could be warm in the bed. All right. The doctor said, well, we might not be able to help you for it to cure. But he said, what we would do, we'll do the best that we can. Yeah. And that's all we can do. I said, that's fine. My mother came in the house when the doctor left and she said, son, I'll be back. She went in the kitchen. You laugh about this. She took some fig leaves, some lemons, and some honey, and made it real thick. And then when she got through that sticky stuff, she poured it on my leg because she couldn't rub it. And every night she poured. And when she get through pouring it, she'd get out of here and talk to him who told her how to do it. I don't have to tell you. Until I hurt my knee, I've been walking ever since. And I got healed and the skin came back on my leg. I watched it for myself. Friends, it took me 15 years from stamina, getting help, until one day I woke up and didn't stamina no more. I've been praying since I was a kid, day and night. The reason the enemy haven't taken me in because I'm surrounded by the spirit of the living God. You used to sing, he put a fence all around me. But I don't need to sing it. I know it. God can help you. I need just a few praises over here. If God done something for you, holler out, praise him. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah to the king. Early this morning, I'm, I'm talking about thank you for all that you've done. He brought me through this week, and I've got to thank you. Church, you ought to give him a praise for what he's done for you, for what he's going to do for you. He still wants to bless you. Praise him Why you can. Every now and then, I've got to give him a praise. Because he's worthy. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's all blessing. He is all that we need. Praise his holy name. I've got to give him a praise. If Ray Jackson was here, I have him to sing for you. If you don't want to pray, that's all right. Just get out of my way and let me praise him. I'm not ashamed to praise him. Done too much. I pray to him. I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. And have a prayer life. If you had a prayer life, you'd be surprised. Well, Henry, come here. I've been here in this church. I've been here 45 years and seven months in past of this church. I try to follow God. Well, Honor, we would tell you, of all of these years, how many people could tell you this? I never all of these years and months had a fight with Dick Zinner? No, sir. Never. I don't believe in that. 
If God is God, let him be God. And I can't have it because you don't want to let God lead you, but I got to let him lead. Now I've gotten too old to take over my life. I got to let him lead me now. I think to let him lead me now. And long as he leads me, listen careful, long as he leads me, I don't have to worry about my age. I just want when I can't dance, I just shake it. <laughs> Hallelujah to my king. Glory to his name. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You don't want to praise. Get out of my way so I can. Let's sing it now. Come on, praise him in the morning. Oh. While the Spirit is speaking to your heart, would you say yes to Him? Don't turn Him away. The young man in life suddenly wanted to come, but he was just too nervous in this section. Don't let the devil deprive you of your power and your acceptance to the Holy Spirit. Ask God's blessing for God's tithes and offerings. It's time for us to bring our 
bring God's tithes and offerings. He's going to pray for us and pray with us. Let us pray. Father God, we're grateful for this opportunity to give. Thank you for your many blessings that you've given us through the week, the strength to work, and you've blessed us to hold your tithe. Now it's time to pay. Bless our hearts to be right with you, Lord. In the name of our God, let us all say amen. Worship at the door. Worship at the door. 